India has become a space power today. That's what the Indian Prime Minister announced this morning after almost an hour of suspense. It began with a tweet. Prime Minister Modi said he had an important announcement to make and later from his official residence in New Delhi, he said this. Bharat ne aaj apna naam antriksh mahashakti space power ke rup mein darj kara diya hai. अब तक दुनिया के तीन देश अमेरिका रूस और चीन को यह उपलब्धि हासिल थी अब भारत चौथा देश है जिसने आज यह सिद्धि प्राप्त की है कुछ ही समय पूर्व हमारे वैज्ञानिकों ने अंतरिक्ष में स्पेस में 300 किलोमीटर दूर एलईओ लो अर्थ ऑर्बिट में एक लाइव सैटेलाइट को मार गिराया है एलईओ लो ऑर्बिट में यह लाइव सैटेलाइट जो कि एक पूर्व निर्धारित लक्ष्य था उसे एंटी सैटेलाइट ए सेट मिसाइल द्वारा मार गिराया गया है इंडिया इज नाउ पार्ट ऑफ एन एलिट ग्रुप ऑफ कंट्रीज विच कैन फायर एट टारगेट्स इन स्पेस बट वाई इज दिस केपेबिलिटी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर इंडिया दी आंसर लाइज इन आर सराउंडिंग सैटेलाइट रन एवरीथिंग दीज डेज दे यूज वेन यूर लुकिंग फॉर अ रूट ऑन योर मैप्स एप दे इनेबल कम्युनिकेशन countries use them for gathering intelligence satellites are used for guiding missile weapons in more ways than one satellites are the new strategic assets and this also makes them the target shooting down a satellite could cripple a country's navigation communication and intelligence networks so it becomes an imperative to protect satellites an anti satellite weapon will prove to be a valuable deterrent for india when china tested its own anti satellite missile in 2007 india felt the need to develop its own but what took us so, so long you may ask why did india have to wait for 12 years to get an anti sat missile we had the technology we did not have the political will former drdo chief vk saraswath has told we on that india had the building blocks to accomplish this feat but the upa government led by the congress party then did not allow them to proceed former isro chairman g madhavan nair has backed saraswat's claim if you know that in 2012 13 we had made a statement that india has the capability to launch a program of anti satellite uh, missile capability unfortunately we did not take the decision at that point in time and this government has taken the decision just about less than 2 years back and in 2 years drdo has been able to build the necessary technologies for interception of a uh, satellite in low earth orbit so what are the key takeaways from today's launch how does india's position on the world stage change let's bring you the inside story the thought and planning behind today's test it took years in the making it's part of a bigger plan we can tell you let's break it down for you first India has established itself as a major space power today. This is a quantum jump in India's CNP. What is CNP? Comprehensive national power, something that factors in your military strength, your technological prowess, your demographic strength, the money you have, your armory, a whole host of things. So today's test has tremendously boosted India's comprehensive national power and also India's strategic clout. Basically it's a boost for India's defense capability that gives it a greater say in global affairs specifically when it comes to matters of space. Number 2, India now has the capability to destroy targets of adversaries in outer space. Targets in the entire low earth orbit 1200 kilometers away from the surface of the earth can now be shot down. This capability will serve to be useful a useful deterrent especially against China. At the moment Chinese military assets dominate the lower earth orbit. Next this is a projection of India's technological prowess everything that was required for this project was developed at home this includes the missile that shot down the satellite starting today India will have a say in the future of space the arms race we know is on the arms race in space 
efforts are underway to finalize a treaty, a treaty that will introduce regulation on such weaponry. Who makes these rules? The countries which already have such weapons. They sit in the decision-making chairs. America, Russia and China, they do not want new entrants. But now they don't have a choice. India gate crashed and India claimed its place before these countries could formulate a new law. And finally, today's move also showcases the Indian government's will to modernize and build India as a military and strategic power. So we've discussed what a big deal this anti-satellite missile is. Now let's tell you, what is it? What is an ASAT? How does it work? What do countries do with it? We break it down for you in the next two minutes. India has launched itself into an elite club of countries. A made in India anti satellite weapon has been successfully tested by India's premier space agency. But what is an anti satellite weapon? Commonly known as ASATs, they are space weapons designed to incapacitate or destroy satellites for strategic military purposes. So far, only the United States of America, Russia and China had tested anti-satellite weapons. There are various ways in which countries can demonstrate ASAT capabilities. Flyby tests and jamming are among some of the popular techniques. But India used the technology of kinetic kill. No ASAT system has been utilized in warfare so far. But these three nations have shot down their own defunct satellites to demonstrate their ASAT capabilities, all for show of force. An anti-satellite weapon is used to jam or destroy an enemy country's satellite in space. Since most of the communications networks are satellite-based now, this capability can have a disastrous impact on the country whose satellite is targeted. In the time of war, the country with ASAT weapons can stop its enemy from communicating with their soldiers. The ASAT can also be used to block critical information about troop movements or incoming missiles. So theoretically, India now holds other countries' satellites at risk. But the ASAT can do more than just jam satellites. It can carry out cyber attacks on space systems. It can undertake pellet cloud attacks on enemies' low orbit satellites. It can direct energy weapons towards other satellites and target missiles to sabotage the enemy's military operations. India's successful testing of the ASAT is important. China built its anti-satellite weapon in 2007 and put dozens of satellites in orbit just in 2018 alone. And with India becoming the fourth country to be ASAT capable, it sends a strong message to its neighbours in the region. Bureau report, we on, world is one. The times are changing after land, sea and air, space is being pegged as the next battleground, the next frontier, which is why Donald Trump wants his own space force. Last year, the American president signed a memorandum to create a space command. This is a new organizational structure that will control military space operations. It will be charged with finding ways to defend American assets in space. It will work on making technical advances that are required to safeguard American interests in space. America has a long history of developing space weapons. The first instance was in 1963. An American missile, back in 1963, armed with a nuclear warhead, had destroyed an orbiting satellite. During the Cold War, the Americans accelerated their efforts, but after the Cold War, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, these efforts slowed down. And now the current president, Donald Trump, wants to kickstart all of this. He is ready to pump in $800 million over the next five years for his space command. China, by all counts, is a latecomer to space exploration, but after missing the bus decades ago, China is quickly catching up. It is only the third country after America and Russia to send its own astronauts into space using indigenously developed rockets. Beijing maintains that all of its missions serve peaceful purposes. Nobody believes them. America's Pentagon, perhaps, has the most critical assessment of China's space program. In their report last year, they claimed that this space program is, quote-unquote, central to modern warfare. And this assessment, we can tell you, is central to President Trump's demand for a space force. In 2007, China blew up one of its own weather satellites from Earth in a military test. 
not only was Beijing able to fire a ballistic missile into space, debris from that test still float in outer space. It led to global criticism of China, but that did not deter them. China followed it up with more tests in 2010, in 2015, and then again in 2018. India's anti-satellite test also made headlines around the world, and once again, the Western media's inherent bias against India is coming to the fore. A New York Times article questioned India's successful missile test. It read, and I'm quoting, if confirmed, a successful missile test would put India in a small club of countries, including the United States, Russia, and China. The important words there are, if confirmed, the premise. Another article in Pakistani newspaper, The Dawn, also used the words India claims in the headline. It read, India claims to shoot down satellite, joint space superpowers. Very well. An article in the Irish Times followed suit. It wrote, India claims space power status as it shoots down satellite. Several other news outlets have also slipped in bits about how this latest development will revive fears of the weaponization of space and set off a race between rivals. This is not the first time the Western media has downplayed India's achievements. Even after the Balakot strikes, remember, several Western media outlets questioned the legitimacy of India's strikes. This is par for the course now, it seems. India's space program, meanwhile, after being declared a pariah in the early days, is now thriving. ISRO is one of the fastest growing space programs in the world. Its commercial arm, Antrix is now a go-to option for at least five developed countries. They use this road to launch their satellites into space. In the 21st century, the Indian space program has emerged as a potent force in the rapidly growing space industry. Here's our story. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, ten. This was the moment that put ISRO on the global map. In 2017, Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, set a new world record. An Indian rocket successfully launched 104 satellites by a single rocket. It was one of the most complicated missions ever carried out by ISRO, and it was completed without a hitch. In the 21st century, ISRO has emerged as a powerful force in space research. The recent missions have cemented India's place as a leader in frugal space technology and research. But India's tryst with space began more than 50 years ago. The history of space research in India can be traced back to the 1920s under scientists S.K. Mitra, C.V. Raman and Meghnath Saha. Earlier on, Studies were restricted to the Earth's atmosphere, weather prediction, and the surrounding magnetic field. But the groundwork of space missions was laid in 1962 when Jawaharlal Nehru, alongside scientist Vikram Sarabhai, established the Indian National Committee for Space Research, which would later become ISRO as we know it. A year later, India launched its first rocket into space. Over the next many decades, ISRO would develop, improvise and launch several indigenously created vehicles into space. The launch of India's first satellite, the Aryabhat, was aided by the Soviets. ISRO worked with the United States space agency NASA to develop satellite broadcasting technology in India in 1975. It led to the implementation of what is known as Satellite Instructional Television Experiment or SITE program and ultimately the birth of the state broadcaster Doordarshan. But it was not until the year 1980 that India would launch an indigenously created satellite vehicle under the leadership of Satish Dhawan and Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Four years later, teaming up yet again with the erstwhile Soviet Union, the first Indo-Soviet manned space mission was launched. India's Rakesh Sharma 
became the first Indian to set foot in space. All these successes would define ISRO's roadmap for the next few decades. It has expanded rapidly in the last five years. The Mangalyaan mission to Mars was successfully launched. India has since sanctioned the Gaganyaan mission, which will take Indians to outer space. Also, India has undertaken 102 spacecraft missions, consisting of communication satellites, Earth observation satellites, experimental...